You have finished your beautiful plan and now you want to give information to contractors about what types of walls contains what layers of materials and in what order do they have to put those materials to build the wall that you designed. So naturally you turn to legend view and let's create three legend components, three walls and let's match them to the walls that I have in my plan. So wall one, wall two, wall three. Okay, let's align them. Oh, the align tool doesn't work. Okay, let's align them manually, no biggie. Now let's stack the materials okay that works kind of great yeah let's stack the materials in my wall okay air plywood light guard steel framing okay great let's move this up and the last layer is gypsum wall board and now let's stack the wall so the contractor or the builder knows which wall type i'm referring to with these materials and this order so the wall one wall two wall three okay let's stack by category tg Click on the wall, mm, something's not right. Annotate, tag by category, and I cannot select the wall. How strange is that? Because this component clearly has the information about what type mark it is assigned to. Let's see what other does Gravit help. We'll have to say about the legends. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let's see, create a legend. Okay, okay now about legend views okay yes 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 you can material legend this is what it's supposed to do display sample of a cut surface pattern yes phasing okay great 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 about dimensions and legend components okay we can add dimensions to windows to profiles oh here we go legend examples and this is exactly what we need. What do we have here? A wall with the type mark tag and keynotes. Oh, we don't use keynotes. Yeah, we can tag by material description, but we have a type mark tag. So Autodesk and other Revit tutorials suggest that we draw those type mark tags by hand and write them in text note and draw the border with detail lines. And that is totally unacceptable and insane. Imagine you have like 20 or 30 wall types and writing them all by hand is like going back to AutoCAD drafting. The other thing is you cannot snap to those legend components. So you cannot uh, arrange those wall legend components in equal positions. And that is very frustrating when you have many wall types and you want to arrange them in some kind of order. And because of this you cannot dimension the wall. The only way you can do that is again by hand drawing detail lines or drawing reference planes. In my practice I only use legends for text notes. So I hope someday Autodesk Revit will have this option for legends to have tags. Because in my architecture practice I need to use them in almost every project. And the way I do it now is this workaround that includes phases. You need to insert a new phase before the existing phase and let's call that a legends. Now next we have to duplicate a view and uh, rename it to a legends view. And we will organize our legend components in that view later on. Okay, when that is done we need to CS create similar object of a wall. And now we have to change phase created for that wall to legends. And also we have to change phase for the view to legends. And what's most important we have to change phase demolish to existing for that legend element. Now next I draw a section through the wall and now you can see our new legend component uh, the wall. Change the height to whatever you like and change the scale to whatever you like. And now you can easily copy the legend components and you can easily snap the dimensions to them and get easily equal dimensions between them. And you can basically annotate those elements without any restrictions, just as it should be in the legends view, but it's not. So the way I do it, I tag the elements and let's match the walls that we have. Let's match wall type 2, let's match wall type 3. Let's change the height to those legend elements so they have the same height. Okay, so next I'll just tag more materials material tag and the way I do it I just copy the material tag for a fixed distance let's say 120 and then I just move the uh, leader arrowhead to the next material and then I'll just align them okay copy again for 120 
this has uh, two lines of description so we have to align those material tags later on i'll probably make another video about the formatting of these uh, legend components let's edit this tag and let's change the leader arrowhead to dot so it's better visible where it's pointing to and now let's copy all of those material tags to the next element let's uh, delete that one and we have to align those leader arrowheads so we align that one move these down move this one to the right and let's move this here the next one up we don't need the last one so let's move this bit up and this to the right to the right okay looks good and wow we can also put dimensions to this element let's align those okay looks kind of great and now look at that we can change our type mark and it changes in our legend view what what is this even possible no manual rewriting of the type mark so the next thing i do i just copy the walls to the right and basically you can copy them with the, the tags with the material tags with the dimensions and uh, it all stays connected and what i do i kind of group these elements so let's say to the right we have interior walls and to the left we have exterior walls now let's change those types to interior wall types and oh my god look at that we can snap to those elements and let's equally distribute them isn't that great that is impossible in legends view so what else can we do we can tag these elements also and what's great about this we can create different tags for different properties for this wall type let's say you want to assign a tag for a fire rating for this wall type so the contractor knows that this wall type has to be for fire rating of one hour let's add this to the wall type okay and now we have to edit this wall tag so that it shows our uh, fire rating let's edit this family let's copy this in the same place of zero and now let's edit the label and let's add a fire rating and let's remove this one and now we have to edit a visibility parameter let's create new parameter and let's call that a fire and group that under graphics okay and now we have to add that parameter to our type mark uh, label let's call that type and group under graphics also okay okay and load that into the model and now our red existing version okay and now we have to edit and create one new family type let's okay let's uncheck the fire for the basic one and now let's duplicate this one and call that fire and inverse the graphics for that okay 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 and now you can see that we have a fire rating tag for this wall type and what i typically do next i rename this section to let's say wall legend and then i will duplicate that as dependent view let's duplicate as dependent okay and what's great about this that you have a one main view where you can see all of your wall legends and you can easily group them and put them on sheet so let's group this one and now we have two and we have this main view and now let's create new sheet and let's put them on the sheet here you go one and two and here you have we have two groups of wall legends with all the annotations and tags needed and here we have a main view and what's important to remember we have to add a demolished face for all of those wall elements so they don't mess up our material takeoffs and our wall quantity schedules so what i do usually i make another legend for the floors and for the roofs and for the ceilings let's add a new floor element here in our legend view now go to the section move that up and go to the main section and now we can see that in our wall legend section we have our floor here let's change the type to let's say 
standard timber and look at that we have our floor element and we can tag materials just the same as we did for the walls uh, so our contractors know in which order to put the materials and how this construction is coming together so now it's all about the annotation let's copy this down for 120 now we have to load a floor tag let's load some load floor tag okay let's tag this floor and now we have to edit this floor tag so it shows the type mark and not the type name let's add type mark and remove type name load into the model and overwrite existing version and now we can add a floor type mark okay we can add a dimension for the floor and now we can duplicate the view and rename this dependent view as floor legend okay we can crop this a little bit smaller and what i usually do for the floors i add some elements like this beam here so that the contractor knows that there is beam inside of this floor construction and basically you can do whatever you want with these legends there are no limitations so here we go you can put that uh, floor legend on a sheet and then you have complete legend of the floor and wall elements and you can do the same for the ceilings and for the roofs and for the other elements so i really hope that autodesk someday fixes the legends until then i hope this tip helped you and have a great day and see you in the next video